So I just woke up and that's what I woke up to. So that snow, this was almost completely bare yesterday. There was barely any snow and now it looks like we have at least a good inch, maybe two inches. Michigan in winter, you gotta love it. All right, I want to officially wish you all a good morning. Um, as you can tell, the snow from earlier, it is slowing down and even stopping. So that was kind of a surprise to wake up at like nine o'clock this morning, looking like, oh, it's that light again, the light. See, I associated with uh, when I wake up in the morning, if it's a certain light outside, I know it means it's snowing. I don't know if that's just me, but it's like, I there's like this, it just makes a really weird light. So I'm like, oh, it's snowing. Roll over, it's snowing and it's like <laughs> really, Moderate snowfall. I'm like, that's a surprise. I knew it was gonna get cold because that's what they were talking about. We had this nice warm up and now we're going into a cool down. And then they were like, it rained yesterday, it's supposed to be snow this morning. But I'm like, yeah, but it was warm. We're not gonna get too much snow, but I think we have at least a good half inch and a half, maybe two inches, maybe three of snow. So, I mean, you look at my windowsill, there is probably at least two inches of snow on my windowsill. So that was a surprise to roll over, look out the window and go, snow, so yay. And it's supposed to be cold. But the thing was when it was really cold, it's too cold, it won't snow. And if it's too warm, the snow just turns into rain. So we kind of have to have this middle ground. So it's nice. It's very nice. So that was amazing to wake up to this morning and having snow and also waking up this morning checking my email because that's one of the first things I do especially now since I'm waiting here back from Macron on wheels check my email and I had an email and I had just posted Wednesday I posted the latest chapter for crossing battlefields flames old and new which is my rewrite of the Mandalore plot, which that is one of my favorite arcs from the Clone Wars because it introduces one of my favorite, I don't want to call her a secondary character, but she kind of is. She introduces Satine, and it's because of Satine that I got more interested in Mandalore than what I was before because before then my really only exposure to Mandalore was Boba Fett and Jingle Fett, and technically they're not Mandalorian, so I really wasn't like that into it, and then I met Satine, and I'm like, oh, wait, this is cool. So that's when I started getting into the Mandalorian stuff. And then Sabine. Sabine and Satine. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so cool. So that's how I got into the Mandalorian stuff. So I rewrote the first episode and I read reviews and I've had two so far. Pink You Pink said, Pink, I think it's Pinky You Pink. I love the screen name people have. Like one of my newest follow one one person who favorited one of my stories, her name is like Yu-Gi-Oh 1923. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I know what Yu-Gi-Oh is. I don't get the reference to 1923, so that can go delete. Delete. Goodbye. So yeah, pink pink you pinky. So she was waiting for me since I announced I would be doing the Mandalore arc. I would be having my original character, Annalise, meet Satine. She got so excited, and I did not disappoint because it was a really good chapter, which makes me happy. It is such a pain to try to do accurate Star Wars fan fiction because there's so much stuff, and so it can be a pain sometimes. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I learn a lot. And then I certainly know a lot more than I did when I started. And then I woke up this morning to a review from guest, and they say they love this story, keep up the good work, and then they follow this up. Also in this chapter, I'm getting serious Hamilton feels. The sisters Angelica and Eliza, Satine and Annalise, which makes the story way better for me. Not sure if you've seen Hamilton, though. Love your work. Update soon. Which my next update will be posted the week of the 21st. <laughs> Because episode-based chapters, I get out every other week. Um, I have I have not seen Hamilton. I've seen clips of it on YouTube. I've seen their performances at the Grammys and the Tonys. I have the soundtrack to Hamilton. Thank you, my brother. 
Um, I love Hamilton. It's so cool. I... Wait, who is who? Are you saying... I'm trying to figure out if they're saying Satine is Angelica and Annalise is Eliza. And if you don't know, and they're the three of the... They're two of the Schuler sisters. Alexander Hamilton, the father of our treasury, he married Eliza Schuler. And, but some say, um, but he was also really close with her sister Angelica, who apparently was in love with him, but decided that since her sister Eliza was so shy that she would let Eliza have him. And they are, and so Angelica was very outgoing. She was kind of ahead of her time. She was a feminist. She was very smart. All of the Schuler sisters were very smart. Angelica was very much the more, if you see Hamilton, Angelica is very much the more vocal, the more politically active one. The one who was of the same, similar, the one they have her play is that she's of the same, some, like the same mindset as Alexander Hamilton. She's very intuitive. She's very smart. She's very much like him. And Eliza is smart, but she's very shy. She's kind of quieter and softer. But she's just as interested in politics and the revolution and stuff, but not to the extent her sister is. So I'm trying to figure out um, if they're saying... So when I was writing this, did I write Satine, like Angelica Schuyler, and Annalise is like, um, Eliza Schuyler, because <laughs> I, I didn't sit there and notice it. All I have is watching the episode, and Satine and Obi-Wan have very similar personalities, so they have very strong beliefs, and that's why I like watching this so much, because it's so much fun watching someone give it to Obi-Wan as good as he gives, and it's so much fun watching the two of them fight, which I love, so... <laughs> I was just playing off this dynamic of the fact that they have two different viewpoints about war and peace, but they have similar personalities and that just clashes. It would have been interesting if they had gotten together because it's like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun to watch. But Annalise is definitely, when I write Annalise, I kind of made her my personality, only more exaggerated. Like this, I am not shy. In public, when I'm meeting new people and stuff, I tend to be really shy. <laughs> and quiet and unsure. So I wrote Annalise like that. Annalise is the part of me that people see, but they don't, but except for this, you probably wouldn't see me and think I'm the same person because here I'm loud, I'm outgoing, I'm boisterous, I'm my friendly go lucky self, but in public in a new situation, I tend to be very shy and quiet because I'm actually interacting with people. Here there's like a distance. I'm talking to a screen, so I'm not that scared or nervous that if I mess something up, someone's going to call me on it because I'm basically talking to myself. So so I wrote Annalise to be me, and she's kind of very shy and quiet, but she's very friendly. She's very friendly, but she's shy and quiet. She's like, she doesn't announce her opinion to the world. She has a temper. I basically wrote her, and I'm looking at this, okay, what do I have? Okay, I'm shy and quiet, but I'm very friendly. I'm very open. I have very strong opinions. What am I missing? Oh yeah, I have a horrible temper. <laughs> I admit it, I have a very nasty temper. I am a hothead. The problem, the thing is, is I don't actually get that easily mad. And if I do get mad, I'm like done being mad in like five minutes. It's like I, I yell and I scream and then like five minutes later I'm just talking. So, I have, uh, I, it can be very quick, it can be very slow, it just depends on what's going on. Like, certain people raise my temp, bring my temper to a boil faster than others. One of them is our president, who I don't like to talk about politics, but I'm so mad at his recent acts, and it's all, and it's targeting immigrants, and here's the thing. America is a nation built on immigrants. In fact, if you go back and look at the Puritans, the first people to come to America, they were fleeing religious persecution. Technically, they were illegal immigrants who came to this country fleeing religious persecution, freeing violence against themselves and their family. He just told thousands of people from a country that is enveloped in violence, where most young people don't have a chance to be anything but a gangster, that, hey, you've lived here for so many years, but guess what? You have to go back to this country where it's not safe for you or your family. And I'm like going, oh my God, you idiot. Most of them, I don't say my ancestors because my ancestors, my um, European ancestors didn't come over here till like the late, to like the 1890s at the earliest and they weren't fleeing religious persecution. They were literally looking for a better life. But oh my gosh, the original European immigrants here were fleeing religious persecution. 
during the height of the immigration to America, most people, you had people do it, people of Jewish persuasion from Russia, they were fleeing religious persecution. Irish people, and they lived in um, Northern Ireland, no, not, yeah, no, think Southern Ireland, North, Northern Ireland, they were fleeing religious persecution. So, to sit there and say, okay, we're a country founded on immigrants, we're proud of our past because we came here for a better life to escape violence, to escape poverty, to escape persecution. Oh, you guys are here for the same thing? Oh, but because you're like not European, you can't be here. You have to go back to your country where it's not safe for you to live and your kids will probably never have an education, never get the chance to live out their dreams. I'm saying they're going, that's not fair. And I feel like I have, can say it stronger because of the fact that I'm only fourth generation American on my mom's side. And I'm like fifth or sixth on my dad's. And the interesting thing is, I'm, I always talk about this, this is my heritage and it's not like I'm from Mexico or anything like that. I'm not. I'm European. I am British, Canadian, German, Irish, and Scottish. But there's also a part of me that I am also a fifth name American. So I'm only a few generations away from my grandmother, who was full on Native American, and she left the reservation because she wanted a better life and a better chance. So... And of course, Trump is taking away land that is sacred to Native Americans now because he says we can use that for development, and that's not fair. Okay, I study Native. I was really big into studying Native Americans when I was in eighth grade because I wanted to learn more about that side of me that I didn't know that much about, other than the fact that I was a fifth Native American, and it was kind of important to me. I learned some of that, and so it really, I really boiled. I, I don't know what. What tribe we belong to? My dad thinks we, I thought we were from a local tribe here, but my dad says actually, um, my grandmother who was from the reservation, she was actually from the Southwest, so I'm thinking maybe Sioux. I'm not sure. We think Sioux because that's where she, where her reservation was, was in the American Southwest. So, I'm sorry, it just boils it. And then to hear him say the other day, he called some of these countries where some of these immigrants are coming from, some of the hardest hit countries, he are call, he's calling them, I'm not saying the world, he's calling them basically dumps. And he says, we don't want people from these countries. We want people from like Norway. Well, people from Norway aren't coming to the United States because they have a great life in Norway. They don't need to leave their homes behind. They don't need to leave their family and friends behind. They don't need to leave anything behind. Their lives are great in Norway. They have safety. They have homes. They have food. They have education. They have the means to work and defend themselves and just live great lives. People coming here from these countries that he just called basically dumps, they don't have that. They aren't able to have like basic shelter or food or medical care or education, or anything. Do you really think they want to leave their entire life behind to come to a country where they know they're going to have to struggle for years just to make any sort of decent living? Where they're going to have to learn an entirely new language, a new way of living? Where they're going to have to deal with a country where because of freedom of speech, we have hate groups that spring up everywhere? Whereas I love freedom of speech, but still. I think what he doesn't understand is that for some immigrants, it's not that easy. They want to cut, they don't, listen to the refugees. They don't want to leave their homes. They don't want to leave everything behind. They want to stay in their homes. They want to raise their families where they were raised. They want to be with the people they know. But they can't do that because it's not safe. These immigrants are coming here because they don't have any other means with which to make a living. And it's horrible. And it's just, it drives me batty. And then we have, there's just so much stuff going on in the world. Like, I don't like to talk about Israel, my stance on Israel, because I know as an American Christian, I probably will get a ton of backlash for this. But I don't agree with Trump's decision to move the embassy to Israel. He's like, oh, Israel is for the Jewish people. It's not for the Jewish people. Jerusalem is sacred to the three faiths. Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. I can't sit there and say, oh, it's a smart move to move the embassy to Jerusalem, which is what apparently this law was passed to do. I can't sit there and say it. It's not a smart move because you have three religions for which that city is an epicenter for. You also have the fact that the Israeli government is sitting there and saying, we have a right to do this. We have the right to stop 
to stamp down the Palestinians. They don't have that right. That's not fair. It is wrong for them to be treating the Palestinians like they are. Because they're doing this because of the actions of a few. They're ruining the lives of everyday Palestinians because of a few. That's not fair. It's not right. So I can't stand there and say I stand by the president's decision to move the American embassy to Jerusalem because I can't agree with the actions of the Israeli government who sits there and says they have the right to do that. You don't have the right to take somebody's life away because they're speaking up for what they believe in and defending their right to live. It's not fair. And I said I want to talk about politics and I just got political. I am sorry, so feel free to skip this video. See, that's what I meant by I have a quick temper. Stuff like that, that makes me really mad. It gets me really upset because all I have to do is look at the history of, look at the history of the world. Look at World War II. Look at what happened during World War II. Look at, in Germany, in the land where some of my ancestors are from. Look what happened. Now look at how some of the world sees Germany. I have read comments on documentaries about Germany where people have said all people with German ancestry should be shot. I have German ancestry. Does that mean I should be shot? Because my ancestors weren't in Germany when World War II took place. You know? And... So that's not fair. Again, blaming the actions of, blaming millions for the actions of a few. That is not fair. So like I said, that gets me going because I just have to look at history to see all the stuff that's been done, even here in the United States, looking at our history. It just makes me go, okay, the whole point of us studying history in school was so we could learn from the past, learn, what, learn from the mistakes our ancestors made, and move forward and make and don't make those same mistakes in the future to make the world a better place. How come it feels like I'm one of the very few people who understands the point of studying history other than it's a really cool subject, but nobody else gets it? So, see? Told you I had a temper. I know I've got to relax. I'm not going to think about politics anymore. I don't have to turn on my TV because I don't think my cable is working still. My mom and I discovered that yesterday. She went to turn on her TV to watch House Hunters. No, flip this house or something, and there was no cable, so. I don't think we have cable, so. <sighs> this not stopping. It makes me sad, so. Just taking a deep breath. I'm good. <laughs> I'm sad. It's really, I don't understand any of this. My mom started making the joke a couple of years ago, and she started, she actually made it again a few times when Trump, President Trump got elected that um, my great great grandfather's family, her great grandfather, that was him who came here. My great great grandfather was actually born, I think, in England. And when he was a little boy, his family moved to Canada, and then a couple years later, they came here to Michigan to live. My great grandfather's family didn't have to make that choice. They had a pretty comfortable life in England, but they decided they wanted to move to Canada. And when they got to Canada, they had a pretty comfortable life. I still have family there. But then they made a decision that they wanted to move to America. My mom says if my great-grandfather's family had known what America would be like in the 21st century, how his descendants would be living, what we'd be getting put through and stuff like that, my great-grandfather's family probably never would have moved to America from Canada, let alone left Great Britain. <laughs> So, but I'm, I, it's, I'm good, I'm glad to be a citizen of the United States because we have all these great freedoms, so, but it still makes me sad to see how, how what my country is going through. It makes me very sad. <sighs> Think positive thoughts, positive thoughts. I don't have to write today! I'm so happy! I finished my story on Wednesday, so I am giving myself a, I am giving myself, I took yesterday off, I'm taking today off, I'm taking tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. Tuesday off and I'll start writing and next Wednesday so I'm giving myself like five days, six days off from working on my fan fiction, which means I'm going to practice guitar while these videos are loading. And then I'm going to play Old Republic. Um, I finished the main story. I'm not finished yet. I still have to do Ilum with my knight. I did Ilum yesterday and Wednesday with my smuggler because I want to get her up to level 70 and once I'm up level 70 I'll stop playing my smuggler and my trooper. Problem is they're not doing double XP anymore. I liked when they were doing double experience points so I wasn't able to get her to level 70 just by playing Ilum and doing the last two, doing the battle for Ilum and the false emperor flashpoints. 
which means I have to go ahead and start doing the next story arc, which is Rise of the Heart Cartel, prelude for Rise of the Heart Cartel. Um, and then when she gets to level 70, I'm going to work on my trooper. I might do that for a little bit. Work on my trooper. The thing is, is I have all the expansion packs. It's like, why don't you play all the characters? I find myself most drawn towards the Jedi characters, my consular and my knight. And the thing is, is um, Knights of the Fallen Emperor, Knights of the Eternal Emperor and the Fallen Empire and the Fallen Empire, those are actually your character. I've read the story, your character gets frozen in carbonite and it's the Jedi Outlander. So I think that would make more sense. You get to play as the Outlander. So I think it makes more sense to do those stories playing as a Jedi because the Outlander was a Jedi technically. So I'd rather play... I like that. I would rather play those storylines with my Jedi characters than my trooper and my knight. My trooper and smuggler. Trooper and smuggler are fun to play. I'm enjoying it. Well, like I said, I'm drawn to the Jedi classes, so I, I enjoy playing the Jedi classes more. Though I am slowly getting the hang of my trooper. I will say that. I'm slowly getting the hang of my trooper. And it is easier to do the flashpoints as a story mode when you hit the higher levels, so... So that's my plan today. Get the vo get the vlog for today uploaded and posted, edited, because I didn't do it at all last night. Practice my guitar while that gets done. Um, just spend the rest of the day pretty much playing Star Wars Old Republic, watching videos, and just relaxing because I'm in that weird sort of limbo. I'm waiting here back for a job and another job posted last night in the Mackinac Island job posting days. It was for Shuffler's Ferry Line. I'm interested, but I'm not sure. So. I just got to keep checking and see. So, all right, you guys, stay safe, stay sane. I will talk to y'all later. And I'm sending lots of love, hugs, and bears. I almost forgot that. So, bye-bye. Fast.